Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Coffee and Comedy with myself, Rizal Forbes. And I never am riding solo. I'm always the one and only DJ Mullis giving us the wicky 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 ee. But as you can see, uh, he's not here tonight. I don't think he got the memo. Maybe he's at home with Corona, two weeks quarantine. I don't know. You guys tell me. But we are not in studio tonight. We are actually out and about. Today we are in Waterfront, bringing you the water to your front. So I hope you guys are at home chilling and having a fantastic time. And as you know, on this episode or on this show, we like to take your favorite celebrities and social media influencers, challenge them, chat to them, and also play a couple of games, have a couple of gags, and things like that. And on tonight's episode, we're actually spending the day with South Africa's most well-known comedian. He's also the most halal comedian. He goes by the name of Riyad Moussa. So do hop onto our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram, as well as on Twitter. Put in the comments if you're enjoying the episode. Put in the comments what you want to see. Put in everything. But you know, we always laugh with our videos. Check this out. Yes, man, and just like we said, the doctor is in the house. Doctor, comedian, social media as well, because he's been very, very busy during the lockdown as well. And we are chilling with the one and only Riyad Moussa on today's episode of Coffee and Comedy with myself, Rizal Forbes. First of all, a lot of people wanted to know, Material 2, you said it's coming, we're still waiting. What happened, bruh? Thing 2, I'm waiting as well. COVID happened, that's what happened. Like, we were expecting to release it in October. We had planned at the end of last year. The movie was done. Everything, done. So it's just the release. We just don't know when, essentially, because um, everything is so up in the air. So we had planned to release it now. New material is what it's called. Um, it was supposed to be out in, August, in October and now it's just up in the air. But most likely, uh, you know, in the next few months, we'll hear something. Okay. I don't know. Okay. You guys may no hear before knows. me. No one knows. Uh. Awesome. Let's get into it, straight into it, okay? Um, I want to know, in terms of the comedy, right? You were set on becoming a doctor, you studied, everything like that. When did that, that comedy bug bite you? I just loved stand-up comedy. Um, I found it only after fourth year medicine. This is the thing. So I always wanted to be a doctor. That was my primary aim in life. Both my parents were doctors. My dad always said to me, Riyad, you can do whatever you want to in this world as long as you become an orthopedic surgeon first. So no pressure there. That's the problem. And I always wanted to be a doctor. But then after fourth year medicine, uh, I got exposed to stand-up comedy. Now, it should be said that I started doing magic when I was in Standard 7. Yeah, I went to the College of Magic in Lansdowne Road, Claremont. Very, very different. It was my own magic school, very different to Hogwarts. Like, there Hogwarts, Hogwarts, you go through a magical portal in a train station. Me, I had to, like, you know, walk past a taxi rank, Debonairs, and then I got to my magic school. And uh, it was one of those weird... It was my first... This was pre-'94. Right? So, so it's my first experience also for white, with white people. Okay. Like, because I'm coming from a so-called, I went to SPI. Okay. So I, in Standard 7, when it was called Standards, Grade 9, right? And um, uh, people used to call me Riyadh. Riyadh. Now, I come from a school, I never heard my name pronounced with a R before. Right? A stick, strictly a Riyadh or Yati. No Riyad, like I was like in the first, hey Riyad, I'm like, who's, that's me bruh, you know? So, uh, so it, was a, it was a different time and I learned about magic and uh, the problem with it is like, I, I, I only, I found out that I enjoyed the comedy magic more than the magic. Because I just enjoyed doing funny things. Right, but it was only after fourth year medicine, many years on, when I actually got exposed to true stand up comedy in its art form at university at one of these just little venues. I think I saw Mark Lottering, I think I saw you know, just a couple of other guys who were performing stand up comedy at UCT, and I was like, This is amazing. And that's when I like tried to do my comedy magic on stage with these other comedians and very soon I sort of got rid of my bag of tricks and I just tried to do stand-up comedy and when people loved that when I just got the laughs then I realized this is actually what I wanted to do and it was 
purely through it's an organic thing. It was it was never something like I specifically planned, but I just once I started, you know, getting the laughs and started getting addicted to the laughs, then it was done. And I did go back to medicine. I completed my degree. Uh, because I never knew at that time, we never knew where it would end up yeah. now. Now we've got like uh, Trevor uh, in the A-list celebrity uh, doing the the Daily Show. But that time, you purely did stand-up comedy for the love of the art form. Yes. There was never a potential for it to be a business. I never knew that I'd be making movies, being material along with the freedom. I never knew that, you know. I purely loved stand-up comedy and that was my impetus for actually doing it the love of the art form nothing else so basically a calling saying listen we're calling you Riyad we want you Riyad and now Riyad is doing the most you know doing everything he's well known everywhere and I just want to know from you um, in terms because it's a very inspiring story um, because I think as a not for my dad. <laughs> not for his dad. He's paid, <laughs> paid for all. My dad paid for everything, and you know I haven't. I know I, I you know I did pretty well at, at at med school, right? And I think that's even more of a sore point because now I also haven't. I, I don't pay my health professional council fee uh, fees to maintain my registration, so I can't even write my own sick notes. So I will phone my dad and ask him to write a prescription for me. And like, he writes it for me, but I think he's well within his rights to go, no bra, no bra, no. Like, I, I paid for, I paid like a lot of money for you to do this for yourself, bra. But still on top of that, he's still he's a good man. He's a good man. And I, I do look after him. That's that's amazing, and I'm sure he's proud as well. Ria, tell us where's hometown? Where did we grow up? Cape Town. Cape where we in Cape Town? Uh, so I went to um, primary school in Grassy Park. I went to Fairview Primary, right, uh, in First Avenue, Grassy Park. And then uh, when I was about 10 years old, we moved to uh, uh, Heath, Heathfield, Alphendale, Punsey Street. Uh, and I was at uh, Fairview, but it's essentially the southern suburbs. So oh, a lot of my family is in Weinberg, Heathfield, Grassy Park, in that sort of oh, wow. section. Yeah. I didn't know he's that close to like the Americans and the mongrels and things. I did not know that. The other when it comes to family gigs, right? I'm getting a bit personal now because that's what we do on the show. Because I'm a comedian myself and normally when it comes to family gigs, um, let's say someone's 50th birthday, whatever the case may be, they're always looking for someone to host the show or they're always looking for a couple of laughs and things like that. How keen are you on actually going out? Because it's worse for you because you are Riyadh Morsa. How keen are you on doing it? No, it's very challenging, especially for, it's difficult for my wife. Because we got four, as you can see, like I've got, I've been overpopulating the earth. Right, bra, four lighties. So essentially what happens when I'm doing the gig, I'm working. Yes. So at a family function, she's got four lighties running around while her husband is like just, you know, at work. So it's very challenging for her. Uh, me, I like, I kind of take it in my stride and I also, I try and ask my family, please, don't make me do this. <laughs> just let me enjoy it, like being part of the family. Get Yasin Bonds. I will get Yasin Bonds, please. Get him off Instagram making all those, those, I don't know what videos he's making. Like some three second video. Like where the intro and outro is longer than the actual video. Like a whole long sting and then like a two second video and then a, a long outro. I don't know why Riyadh's out here throwing shots at other people, but that's that's what people do if you're from Crossy Park. I love Yasin, but I'm saying he must come. I will get Yasin to do my family functions. I can sit there and heckle him from. Definitely. Riyadh, rapid questions. I hope you're ready for it. I hope your brain is awake. Oh. I hope you are super on form right now. Yes. Okay. Favorite soccer team? Uh, Manchester United. Jose Mourinho or Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? Uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Okay. 
And I, because like uh, Mourinho is like, what, I don't know. I don't like his face. He's what, I don't want to do that. Whereas like uh, Ole Gunnar is like 75, but he looks like he's one of my kids. You know, like I, I like that youthfulness. Hectic. Pizza or Gatsby? Gatsby, bro. Gatsby, cut in four. Poloni salad, Gatsby from Anissa. Okay. Gatsby cut in four or roti and chicken curry? With achar. Wait. Um, uh, roti with chicken curry. Okay. And, and according to my wife, who's from Durban, uh, it's not roti, it's a roti. Roti. So, yeah, because they laugh at me when I say roti. But this is how we say it here, brah. Okay. Reality show with Riyad Moosa or become a porn star? A reality show with Riyad. I love how you hesitated first, though, because you're like, okay, I'm, it should be a lull, so what kind of reality show? Jeez. <laughs> Porn star. <laughs> Riyad, thank you so much for chilling with us and <laughs> taking the time out to spend some time. At least we know you have fantasies. Um, and it wasn't exclusive for the show. Tell the people you've enjoyed our little interview today. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. You know, I, you I'm going to come back to the show again. You look like you're going to go home and think about your answer. You just yes, came in. Yes, like maybe because I've already switched uh, careers many times. Maybe I can bounce like a pound pound uh, in the future. Hectic, thank you so much, man. We're going to take a quick ad break. When we do come back, we'll see you after this. Welcome back from the ad break. You are still watching Coffee and Comedy with myself, Rizal Forbes. And just before this, we actually spoke to Riyad Moussa. You know, finding out a bit more who the guy behind the mic is, who the guy behind all of the jokes is. And we do want you guys at home to hit us up on all of our social media pages. Remember, on Facebook, we are Coffee and Comedy with Rizal Forbes. On Twitter, we are at Coffee underscore Comedy TV. On Instagram, we are at Coffee underscore Comedy. And we are on YouTube as well. So make sure you click subscribe and and put the notification on all of those things that the YouTubers actually tell you to do. And you can find some of your favorite episodes on there. Also, just a reminder to let you know that every Friday, our show is between the hours of 10 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. And if you did miss the show, the repeat plays on Tuesdays in the morning at 8 a.m. till 8.30 a.m. So we do want everyone to know. Which artists do you want to see on our show? Which celebrities or social media influencers do you want us to challenge? Let us know on all of the social media pages. Let's go see what Ria did at Starbucks Coffee. All my gigs, my live gigs, just disappeared. Gone, just like that. You know, I was even considering going back to medicine. But here's the problem, people. I haven't done medicine for 17 years, so I'm pretty sure my advice wouldn't be cutting edge, you know? <laughs> Doctor, I got coronavirus. Use Vicks, bro. Just use Vicks. <laughs> like my oxygen saturation is dropping. You need to rub Sam back. <laughs> Expand your alveoli. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Studied for years, and I remember nothing, you know? So I always tell people in my shows, you know, if you're eating one of those whispers, you know, one of those chocolatey treats, and it goes down the wrong pipe, and then you go, <coughs> is there a doctor in the house? I could spring to action and then entertain you as you slowly pass away. <laughs> That's the extent of my ability. I'm like, can I tell you a joke before you die? You must play George Michael at your funeral, because that was a careless whisper. <laughs> Just like, oh. <laughs> it's 
not the same, dude. Not the same. Even an L M I M P, laughing in my synonym for cat. That's not the same, <laughs> right? And I know some people are typing L O L, but you're not really laughing out loud. Like I'm on you, bro. Because I was saying you type L O L, but no expression. <laughs> You should be typing lucky, you know, laughing on the inside. This is what I feel, right? But it's a strange time, you know, you're spending all the time with your family, you know, during lockdown, during lockdown, having arguments with your better off. You know, I'm having a, you know, had a, you know, a few altercations here and there with, with my, my loving partner, you know, because I'm what they call people a whipped husband. <laughs> but uh, not whipped in a good way. You, you know, with a leather. <laughs> You've been a naughty boy. No, no, me, I'm whooped as in I listen to my wife. You know, for me, it's more like 50 shades of obedience. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a victim here. Like, I'm not like Christian Grey. I, I'm Muslim prey. That, that's me. You know, you have to get some milk at the shop, please. Okay, babe, okay, I'll get milk at the shop. But I need to go to the loo quickly. That's a number two. No, okay, I'll connect, I'll connect. Getting milk is more important. No, but it's important to know, people, it's important to know that I choose to be this way. I choose to be this way. In this era of evolving gender dynamics, I choose to be this way. You know, I'm not, my wife's not forcing me to do anything that I don't want to do. You know? She, she told me to make that clear to you. She told me to make that clear to you. And it's true, I'm a man, bruh. I'm not scared of my wife. She's not here, that's why I'm saying that, right? But like, it's true, I'm not scared only if I do stupid things, silly male things. You know, sometimes, you know, we do stupid things. Like, let's say you send to the shop to buy the milk, right? So you go to the shop and buy the milk. And I'm thinking, like, why am I at the shop buying the milk? I have a male idea, right? Why don't I buy some other miscellaneous items that's of necessity in the home? Why not buy the milk, right? So I buy all our stuff, come home. Forget the milk. <laughs> Are there any stupid men out there like me? Like, I, I don't even realize I forgot the milk. And my wife's like, yeah, where's the milk? I'm like, huh? What's the milk not there? Oh, are you sure? And I'm not good at lying on the spot, you know? Like, if I think about it, I'll be like, yes, no, babe. I went to the shop to get the milk, but they were out of milk, right? So I thought I'd go to another shop, but then I saw it was almost Maghrib, almost time for the evening prayer. So I thought I'd come home, pray for your health and well-being, my children's health and well-being. Now I'm done with that, I'm going to go out and get the milk. Right? Not me under pressure, I'm like, uh, they discontinued milk. Because <laughs> you see, it was like a drought in Cape Town, right? And, and, and you know, the cows got dehydrated, and right? so they couldn't produce sufficient lactation output, and so they had to start being discontinued milk. We had to ask to get almond milk. Yeah, yeah, the almond cows, they also got there. <laughs> My wife comes into the room like Leo Neeson from the movie Taken, bro. My beautiful wife comes in. I don't know who you think you are, but as a breastfeeding mother of four, I have a particular set of skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. They will go to the shop and get the milk. That will be the end of it. No harm will come to you. But if you don't, I will look for you. That's a good point. 
For me, the scoring system in a marriage argument is just like the scoring system in tennis. You know, you've got to lose to get love. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? But there's a, there's a special kind of love that develops after many years of marriage. After 17 years of marriage, I see it in the eyes of my wife. You know, it's a special, more refined kind of love. I see it in the eyes of my wife. It's, it's almost like hate, you know? That, that loving hatred, I will die for you, but I will kill you first if you don't pick up your thoughts. You know, when little things become irritating, like how you eat, my wife's like, Ria, do you really need to eat like that? And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not eating that. Because I'll be honest with you people, right? Like, I'm one of those people who make one of those sounds when I eat. Like, I, I'm one of those people. Like, even when I been drinking, like, I'm, I'm, I do. You know what? Before you judge me, before you judge me, viciously, let me defend myself. I keep my mouth closed most of the time, right? But you see, I've got a science problem. So at some point, I have to open my mouth, otherwise I'll suffocate, <laughs> creating an ever so insignificant sound, an ever so gentle sound. But my wife, she doesn't understand. Whenever I do it, she's always like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't even eat chips. I can't even Pringles in my own house. You know, when you're sitting next to each other, maybe watching TV, right? A child sitting next to each other, side by side, trying the chips. <laughs> Well, yes, man, that brings us to the end of tonight's episode, spending the day with the one and only Riyadh Mursa. We do want to know if you guys actually enjoyed that. And all of our social media handles on Facebook, we are Coffee and Comedy with Rizal Forbes. On Twitter, we are at Coffee underscore Comedy TV. And on Instagram, yes, we Instagram babies. We are Coffee underscore Comedy. Make sure you follow us there. The repeat of tonight's episode will play on Tuesday between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8.30 AM. So if you did miss tonight's episode, you can catch it then. Or what you can do is you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. And over there, we play all of your favorite clips, all of your favorite episodes. And you can actually subscribe to that and make sure you click the notification button as well. Well, we or I want to invite you guys as well. What I want you to do is tell me who do you want to see on Coffee and Comedy with the Forbes? Who do you want to find out more about? Who do you want me to actually challenge? And what type of questions would you like to see on the show? These are all the things that we want to know from you. And if, they, if, you, if you know, because sometimes people know other people. So if you know any cool celebs and you're in contact with them, do email us. We are coffee-and-comedy at capetowntv.org. Email me and say, Kegirizo, I know this, bruh. I actually want to see him on tonight's episode. Also, make sure you watch season two of Coffee and Comedy. We're going to come to your TV screens. We're going to do it bigger. We're going to do it better. It's going to be Rizal Forbes as well as DJ Malice. So make sure you are tuned in. And I hope that you enjoyed that first season of Coffee and Comedy with Rizal Forbes. It's been a thrill. It's been an amazing show. It's been an amazing season. Started in studio. Now we're outside of studio. What's a front? I mean, what better do you want? I hope your New Year's are going better. There's no coronavirus. You no trouble. Anything like that. See you at season two.